I've been traveling a bit around the British Isles, and I'm shortly off to the United States again in the near future. I was in Japan not long ago, and all these countries have had or are having major elections. There's been a major election in Japan that could change the political complexion of that country. There have been elections in Great Britain, and already within three days of the new government, it is already virtually in crisis due to corruption, scandals, a new budget that is not popular, and a prime minister who most people who voted for do not seem to have much regard for. He didn't really win the election. Only 20% of the voters voted for him. It's just that the Tory party, the Conservative Party, lost it. Uh, there is a growing reform party under Nigel Farage, but Britain is in trouble. It is in great trouble, economically, socially, and otherwise. One of the things that has happened in England, it is unbelievable. Hatun Tash, the evangelist to the Muslims in Speaker's Corner, where I used to preach the gospel when I lived in London, when I was in seminary, she was stabbed. She recovered, she had to go into hiding, and she came back being heckled and harassed and threatened by Muslim gangs. The police arrested her. Two-tier police system. Two-tier police system. We find out about the Southport stabbings just north of Liverpool. We were assured by the government it was not terror-related, it was not Islam-related, and those who were saying it was including people who are in government or married to people in government, were being called bigots and extremists and got themselves in trouble with the police. People putting things on the internet that are critical of Islam are being criminally prosecuted by the British police in a two-tiered police system. Muslims generally say what they want and nothing happens to them, no matter how radical by and large. It goes beyond this. We found out that, and it was hidden from us, but now it is known that the individual who stabbed the children in Southport had an Islamic Jihad training manual. He had an Islamic Jihad training manual of how to conduct terrorist attacks instruction manual and he had racin a very very deadly substance yet we were lied to by the british government the police suppressed it the crown prosecutor suppressed it and they went after those who were associating the assailant with islam instead of telling the public the truth tommy robinson is in jail for speaking out you may agree with him, you may not, but we should agree with free speech in a democracy, and there is no democracy. These laws are being selectively applied in a two-tier system. A military combat veteran in Great Britain from the Royal Forces was arrested for praying near an abortion clinic. He wasn't standing in front of it. He wasn't approaching people, entering it to abort their babies. He was doing none of that. He was just standing not far away, but not in front of it, praying. And the police came and asked him what he was doing. And he said, I'm praying. And the police demanded to know the nature of his prayer. Not vocal prayer, but private prayer in, in his privacy of his own mind. And the police didn't like what he was praying, so they arrested him and brought him before a magistrate, and he's been convicted. And this is a legal mess. We are asking people to please support the Christian Institute and uh, other Christian legal charities, the Christian Bar Association, the Christian Law Association, the Christian Institute, and so forth. These people are trying to fight the battles of rights not just of free speech, but of the right to proclaim the gospel. 
the right to express Christian opinion. The police have become a Gestapo in Britain. The FBI has become a political police force in the United States. We have said this. Under the present Biden government, the corrupt Justice Department and FBI were putting Christian parents on terrorist watch lists, terrorist watch lists, for objecting to children being indoctrinated in schools and libraries concerning homosexuality at very young and impressionable ages. And they're put on terrorist watch lists. The Mounties in Canada have similarly been turned into a Gestapo. It's happening in Australia. It's happening everywhere. I was just in the Republic of Ireland. They took a teacher and arrested him and put him in jail for objecting and not calling somebody by their gender pronouns. In Paris, people were bit, beaten up, assaulted, and legally intimidated for objecting to male, biological male athletes playing on women's teams and physically injuring women over whom they had a natural orthomuscular advantage, but demanded to be treated as women. And those objecting are in trouble with the law. The Irish Guard is a political police force. The Scotland Yard is a political police force. The FBI is a political police force. The Mounties are a political police force. They're being used in a way they were never intended to be used in two-tier systems. The media lies repeatedly. Can you imagine, whether you like him or not, Donald Trump has Jewish grandchildren, Jewish grandchildren, Jewish business partners and lawyers, Jewish associates in his companies, Jewish executives in his real estate development, enterprise but jewish family jewish grandchildren and he is the most pro-israel president the united states has ever had according to the israelis he actually moved the american embassy from tel aviv to its biblical capital jerusalem yet he's being called a nazi a Nazi by Camilla Harris, by the left-wing media, a Nazi. He had a rally in New York City, where he and I come from, a rally in Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden is like O2 in London. It's bigger than the Royal Albert Hall. It's like O2 in London, or, or, or the Wembley, bigger than the Wembley Arena. It's like O2 in London. And a number of speakers were there, including Robert Kennedy, a former Democrat, the son of Robert F. Kennedy, who was shot dead by an Arab while running for president because he supported Israel. And his son spoke at the Trump rally. Other former Democrats spoke at that rally. People who were from politically liberal Democratic Party backgrounds who realized the Democratic Party of JFK and of, of, of Scoop Jackson and of Ed Koch and people of that nature no longer exists. It's a different party. It is a socialist party that is increasingly radical, similar to Starmer's Labour Party in Britain. <clears throat> and you've got all these ex-Democrats politically liberal, endorsing Mr. Trump speaking at the conference or at the rally at Madison Square Garden. And the media and Camilla Harris's people were calling it a Nazi rally, comparing it to a rally the Nazis had at a different Madison Square Garden more than a half century ago, 70 or 80 years ago. Well... The present Madison Square Garden was built and opened in the 1960s, the late 60s. I remember when it was open. They tore down the old Pennsylvania Station, railway station, to build the new Madison Square Garden. The old one was torn down decades ago. 
And they were saying a Nazi rally was once held here. Now there's another one. No Nazi rally was held there. What was held there was the Democratic National Convention with Jimmy Carter. Why didn't they make that comparison? If you're going to have a political rally and call it Nazi, why didn't they say that about the Democratic National Convention? Again, two standards. Of course, at the old Madison Square Garden, were they <coughs> confused with the new one? JFK had a political rally. John Kennedy. And what they really didn't want to show people was that the patriarch, the founding father of Democratic Party progressivism, Woodrow Wilson, former president, Woodrow Wilson at the time of the First World War. He had the Ku Klux Klan with their regalia and their hoods and their sheets over their head carrying American flags at his inauguration. The founder of the progressive wing of the Democratic Party had the Ku Klux Klan at his inauguration. The lies and hypocrisy are unbelievable. But it goes beyond that. We know from Daniel chapter 2, verse 13, it is the Lord who establishes and removes kings for his purposes. But let's understand something. King Saul made multiple attempts on the life of King David in order to keep power. He murdered Abiatar the high priest. He would stop at nothing. He became in witchcraft, necromancy, and the occult. He would stop at nothing to keep power. Lo and behold, things have not changed much. When we read the scriptures, there was a wicked queen who was the daughter of Queen Jezebel from the ten northern tribes, Israel. The daughter of Jezebel, the wife of Ahab, a Gentile pagan who married a Jewish king. God's judgment on the house of Ahab was carried out by another king called Jehu, also in Israel. But their daughter, Atliah, through marriage, becomes the queen consort of Judah. That is the Levites, the tribe of Judah, the Benjamites, and the refugees who didn't turn to idolatry who came down from the ten northern tribes. They were trying to get power and control over Judah as they had over Israel, the northern kingdoms. And the instrument of the devil to do this and to destroy the house of David so the Messiah could not come was this wicked woman who was the daughter of a wicked woman, Queen Athliah, the daughter of Jezebel. Athliah bat Yehizabel in Hebrew, a terrible woman. Her own son was killed. King Jehu wiped out most of the house of Jezebel, and then Jezebel died. The judgment of Jezebel that we see in the book of Kings is a shadow, a type, a picture of the judgment of the great harlot in Revelation. Remember, there was a puddle of blood with her skull and her hands only when she was thrown out the window, and the dogs were lapping up her blood. Now, there's much symbolic meaning in this in terms of being imprecatory and a judgment. But her daughter picks up her mantle. She was first a queen consort, but then she became Queen Rainham. She was the only woman to be the monarch of the Jewish state, north or south. 
Israel or Judah, the only one. She was the feminist of her day. Anything a man can do, I can do. And she wanted the political power to do it. And she conspired. And she consorted. She was willing to do anything. Including murder a baby. One baby, King Jehoash, the rightful heir to the throne of David. Again, the preservation of Davidic descent, royal, uh, the royal Davidic descent, was essential to the ultimate identification of the Messiah. We see this by looking at the book of Ruth, the gospel of St. Matthew, etc. Genealogies of Jesus. He had to be a descendant of David. And Satan was out to destroy this to prevent the Messiah, and of course with it the Messianic redemption from coming and this wicked woman gets control she wanted to be the first monarch absolute monarch dictatorial monarch or monarchess and would do anything to get that power there was a spiritual battle a spiritual battle she was animated like her mother by demonic forces weak men like ahab who pandered to her mother pandered to her weak men and she would do anything the battle the treachery, the conspiracies were only a reflection of what was transpiring in the heavenlies. Again, we see in Daniel and Revelation and Zechariah and in Job, the conflicts on earth are reflections of and extensions of spiritual conflicts in the heavenlies. Hence the importance of prayer. Nonetheless, Queen Athlea would stop at nothing. She was the feminist of her day. She was somebody with no qualification or competence. She was purely a political animal, as it were. Not in the democratic sense, there was no democracy, but certainly in the regal sense, the regal politics and the theocratic politics. Stop at nothing. Do anything. I want the power. And she was animated by demonic, if not satanic, forces. Tries to kill Jehoash. Servant of the Lord narrowly manages to rescue the baby from her clutches or she would have murdered the baby right now we have late-term partial birth abortion babies that can survive with the syrian section and even younger can survive in an incubator are just being arbitrarily killed in the name of women's rights I watched Michelle Obama give a speech against Donald Trump, calling him every kind of villain imaginable. But what she was pushing was an abortion agenda. Now, Donald Trump is not as pro-life as I'd like him to be. But he is, in some way, to some degree, pro-life more than the others. Now, I don't think he's really pro-life in the sense I would be, or most Christians I know would be. I can only can condone abortion when it's necessary to save the life of the mother, or if it's an ectopic fallopian pregnancy or something like this, obviously, barring a miracle of God, there's a medical necessity to abort. I have 
no objection to that, even though the circumstances are tragic. There are rare, statistically rare, medical conditions. But to use non-therapeutic abortion as a form of birth control, they're just killing. And what this has done to the demographics of China, China is going to lose 600 million people because of a single parent policy of the Chinese Communist Party, where if a woman who already had one baby became pregnant, she would be pressured, nearly forced to abort the second. Japan, South Korea, they are in big trouble. Japan legalized abortion before the United States and Britain. Britain is Islamizing. One of the factors, the abortion rate among Anglo-Saxons and Anglo-Celts and Celts. Continental Europe, the same. The abortion rate has done this. The United States has aborted about 60 million babies for no medical reason. It would be in trouble also if it wasn't for Latin American immigration, much of it illegal. A woman's right. Now, obviously, as Christians, we do not sanction extramarital sex of any kind outside of holy wedlock. We condone sexual union within marriage. He made them male and female, said it was good. God's first command to Adam and Eve was go forth and multiply. Christianity is pro-sex. Sex is God's idea. He invented it. And Christians are pro-sex, as God ordained it within the parameters of holy wedlock. The New Testament tells Christians not to withhold conjugal rights from each other, except for short-term purposes of prayer and fasting. Both tests go forth and multiply. The Song of Solomon. The New Testament, God is pro-sex, and God is pro-life. Camilla Harris climbed the political ladder by having an affair with the mayor of San Francisco, who was later one of the most powerful politicians in California, Willie Brown, the husband of another woman. She was half his age, and he was committing adultery with her, and he sanctioned her to political offices. As prosecutor, state attorney general, senator, he made her what she was. Now, there's different kinds of prostitutions in California. I spent a lot of time in California. I've said this. You have a hooker standing on a street corner on the sleazy end of Santa Monica Boulevard. Thank you. you grant Eddie Murphy get caught. Then you have the Hollywood couch casting prostitution such as what we saw with Harvey Weinstein. Women engaging in sex with these producers and filmmakers to get roles in movies. They slept their way into film roles. They slept their way into political office with another woman's husband. Others just do it for straight out cash. It doesn't matter. You're getting paid for sex. Paid for sex. That's prostitution. That's a whore. Now, I know women who have been prostitutes who came to a saving faith in Jesus, and they became godly wives and mothers. I don't hate prostitutes, but I know what the Bible says about prostitution. 
It hurts those women. It murders their soul. Their conscience is gone. If you stay in prostitution, it will murder your soul and your conscience will be gone. I know this from Christian women who have been saved out of prostitution and human trafficking. Much of the illegal immigration that took place while Camilla Harris was border czar involved human trafficking, often of underage girls, into prostitution. And she just let it happen. It's a horrible life. Talk to any Christian woman who was saved out of that background, and they will tell you. And I know some wonderful believers who were saved from that kind of stuff. Not a lot, but several. And they all have the same story. They all say the same things about it. Prostitution murders the soul, destroys the conscience. You're chasing money, and that's it. And you're being pimped off. You're just a stooge for a pimp. They don't even do it for themselves if they're on the street. Horrible. Well, Harvey Weinstein, although he was not a street pimp, the Me Too movement and the women's rights movement basically look upon him as a pimp. I don't like the Me Too movement or the feminist movement. They're damaging to women and to society. But they're right. What he did was something a pimp would do. He was just another kind of pimp. Pimp. The Bible uses the term whoremonger. In Hebrew, you use the Arabic term, aris, aris. Pimp, whoremonger, aris. Well, The United States is close as it's ever been to having a prostitute become the president of the United States. She was a paid whore. I wonder what the wife of Willie Brown thinks of her. She was a paid whore. Radically pro-abortion. What was Jezebel? What were Athlia? They're described in the book of Revelation by Jesus. He describes Jezebel. You tolerate the woman. She seduces my servants. She engages in whoredom. Spiritual whoredom. Queen Athlia. Whoredom. Camilla Harris, whoredom, the woman is a whore, a paid whore. That's what she did. The black American legate and magistrate, Judge Joe Brown, among other black Americans, have said this about her. They said exactly what I'm telling you. Not only other blacks, blacks in the legal profession and in the judiciary have said what I'm saying. Killing babies? In the United States, seven out of ten abortion clinics are in and around black communities geographically. Those pro-life Christians are guilty of trying to prevent the abortion of black babies. So they're called racists. And they're called misogynists. What about calling them lovers of little babies? 
What about calling them Philo Ebony, lovers of the blacks, because they're saving or trying to save black lives and getting arrested for it in some cases. Yet, Obama's wife gives this speech appealing to women the right to kill these babies. Camilla Harris the same. Kill the little babies, especially the black ones. They get aborted the most. As I've said before, remember, in the United States, it all came from liberal progressivist Democrats, beginning with Woodrow Wilson, who honored, esteemed the Ku Klux Klan and had them participate in his inauguration. From Margaret Sanger, who believed the black people should be sterilized, who believed that blacks were inferior and should not be allowed to demographically proliferate. Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood. And if you disagree with what Wilson did or what Sanger did, you hate women. If you are trying to prevent the abortion of babies and of black babies, 70% of the clinics in black communities or near them, you're a racist. If you don't believe me, ask Camilla Harris or Michelle Obama. This is a whore spirit. It's a murdering a murderer. It's the murder spirit. If you're a mother and you had a baby, you know that as soon as those physiological changes begin to happen biologically, gaining weight, morning sickness, beginning to lactate, obviously temporary cessation of menstrual cycles, once those physical changes took place physiologically, something was happening hormonologically with the endocrine system. And that was neuropsychologically affecting your brain. By God's design, you became focused on motherhood. A life was growing inside of you. Everything of a young married couple is an anticipation of that first precious baby. Ooh. As I've said before, nothing is more antithetical to the God-given nature of women than murdering your own baby. And America has killed 60 million of them. A great many of them, a disproportionately large number of them, were murdered without trial for the crime of being conceived while black. And Camilla Harris comes, who at one time professed to be an Asian. Now for political reasons, identifies as black. She's part Caucasian, Irish descent. She had Irish ancestors in Jamaica who owned black slaves. She's predominantly Asian American and part black. But she plays that card. Barack Obama's mother was white. He grew up white. He's culturally white but he played the black card for political reasons, even though he's culturally Caucasian. They just use race or gender or sexual orientation or anything else they can to their political advantage to get power. And they lie and lie, and lie. 
Camilla Harris, a paid whore, never repented of it. Never apologized to Willie Brown's wife. She was speaking at a church of some description this week. She didn't seem to have the fear of God in her. But let's go on. Everybody knows, everybody knows that she lied for at least two and a half years concerning the mental competence of Joe Biden, of his cognitive decline. She serially denied it in public on television dozens of times. She lied when he was finally exposed in a debate and people knew he was a half senile corrupt decrat, not in control of his faculties. She was caught lying. The fact that she is the unelected nominee, unelected nominee, of the Democratic Party. There's nothing Democratic about the Democratic Party. Nobody voted for her to be their candidate. 14 million voted for Biden. And the 25th Amendment was not enacted, which would have made it legal to remove him from office. But that didn't happen. There was just a political coup d'etat where without any election, even Obama suggested an open primary, or an open convention. No! The Democratic Party leadership, the Clintons, Obama, Schumer, Pelosi, and the money in back of it. Obviously, people like Soros, Bill Gates. Silicon Valley billionaires. The powers that be said she's the nominee. Biden proclaimed it when he said he's withdrawing. The fact that she is the nominee, the unelected nominee, in a political coup d'etat, showing the Democratic Party is not a democracy. If the Democratic Party was a democracy, it would have been Bernie Sanders, not Hillary Clinton, who would have been nominated to run against Donald Trump in 2016. But the party establishment, they have a hundred superdelegates accountable to nobody, led by people like Barbara Brazil and uh, certain other ones of that nature at the time. just decided we're going to get Hillary Clinton, the first woman president, the first feminist. She was married to an Ahab. Went down to Jeffrey Bernstein's sex island with underage girls who were down there after he ditched his Secret Service bodyguards. Him, Prince Andrew, by all reports, Bill, Bill Gates was there. And Hillary is appointed by the establishment. They get rid of Sanders, the left-wing populist. Nothing democratic about them. Now they've done it again. She didn't get a single vote. The only reason she is the nominee is because Biden was suffering at least nascent <coughs> geriatric cognitive decline. And it proves she is a liar. The fact that she is the nominee, howbeit an unelected nominee, 
proves that she's only the nominee because she lied about Biden, who was democratically elected to be the nominee, unlike her. <coughs> it proves she's a liar. She knew he lost the plot and he was in cognitive decline. She knew it. And she got the nomination that she was not entitled to by a single vote from anybody, proving she lied. She could not possibly be in the position she's in if she was not a proven liar. Assured people he's not in cognitive decline. So, you have a paid whore, and like all paid whores, a proven liar. An astonishing hypocrite. And obviously, she's not very clever and, or very knowledgeable. She's just a student. She'll be manipulated, like Biden. Like Obama, there'll be people telling her what to do. She doesn't know. So, there she is. Killing babies. Conspiring. And willing to do anything to get power, just like Queen Athelia. We know that there were two attempts on Donald Trump's life. He got shot, as Robert Kennedy Sr. did. He got shot. Secret Service protection was almost nil. A stupid, worthless feminist Secret Service directress appointed because of identity politics had to resign. That is another attempt. Then we find out that there are other attempts allegedly by the Iranians and yet another report of one today. Somebody wants him dead. Somebody wants him dead. Somebody wanted JFK dead. Somebody wanted Martin Luther King dead. Somebody wanted Robert Kennedy dead. Somebody wanted Medgar Evers dead. And somebody wants Donald Trump dead. I'm not campaigning for him. I'm not endorsing him. I'm simply stating facts. This is a Queen Athlea scenario. Athlea, the only female monarch. Hillary didn't get it. The glass ceiling stayed in place, as she said. So now they're trying with Camilla. And there's enough stupid people not to see through her. Some people at least have the common sense to say she was the border czar and the border's been overrun by millions of people who are taking low-paid jobs and they're underpricing blacks and Hispanics out of the job market. That they're taking social benefits, $2,500 a head to somebody who broke the law and entered the country illegally while the people in the Carolinas devastated by Hurricane Helena are getting $750. This is crazy. Some people see things like that, that they're paying twice as much for gasolines. Nearly. Some places more. That they're paying so much more for staples. Bread, milk, butter, basic staples. Yet, there's people who are stupid.
So they try to genderize it, make it a women's rights issue. Notice the same liberal left. who say that they advocate women's rights, pander to radical Islam that have no women's rights, that force underage girls into arranged marriages, even in Britain and in cases in America. Or they force them to go back to the Muslim world to get married and get a green card for their uncle. Now their husband. Hey, do this. <coughs> do the feminists complain about this? No. Biological males with the natural orthomuscular advantage competing against women in sports and in college sports. Do the left wing feminists have a problem with this? <coughs> care about women they just use them as their patsies as America would call it they certainly don't care about blacks they just use them and when some blacks particularly black males see through this Barack Obama comes out and begins complaining making it a racial issue you should vote for her because she's black well, she's part black. Never claimed to be black in her earlier years. Claimed to be Asian. Ethnically. But whatever is politically convenient. A whore and a liar and a hypocrite. Or is herself a racist and a, an incompassionate human being willing to abort babies who can survive 35, 40 weeks gestation. Get some forceps, pull them through the birth control, do a suboccipital puncture into the cranium and suck their brains out with a suction hose while they're still alive. Partial birth abortion, late term. <coughs> what a wonderful human being. Queen Athlea was into killing babies. So are the Moloch worshippers. Those who object are criminalized. In California, when she was Attorney General, a documentary filmmaker presented video recorded evidence, proof that there was illegal trafficking in human body parts from aborted embryos. Now in China, this has always gone on. They extract the collagen from aborted fetuses as an ingredient in cosmetic products for export. But in the United States, it is illegal. When this video documentary maker showed it was happening Camilla Harris had him prosecuted for some bogus technicality to get him as they do with Donald Trump tried to criminalize him as some bogus nonsense that will be thrown out of any honest court or that any honest prosecutor wouldn't even bother to take to the grand jury. But they'll do anything. They'll corrupt the judiciary to get power. They'll kill babies to get power. They'll assassinate to get power. They'll do anything if you're Queen Athlea. Oh, they might not put the gun to Trump's head, but they'll make sure... There's not enough Secret Service to protect him and that any assassin can get on a, a roof overlooking the podium and speaking platform in Butler, Pennsylvania. 
clear shot. And the guy was there, they saw him. Nothing happened. Whether you like Mr. Trump or not, he turned his head at the right instant, took the bullet in his ear, not in his brain. I believe you have to believe that was divine intervention. God protected his life for a reason. And again, I am not campaigning for him. I'm simply saying the Lord spared his life. Queen F. Lee was desperate. A proven liar? A proven paid whore? A proven hypocrite? Someone that most people thought was a cackling bimbo when she tried to run for president and had to withdraw from the election from the primaries because people thought she was a giggling imbecile. Oh boy, how can a queen like Jezebel get power? Worse, how can a queen like Atlea get absolute power? But the hand of God stopped her. God raised up Jehu to get rid of the house of Ahab and get rid of Jezebel. God did that. I pray that the same God gets rid of Hillary Clinton, Michelle Obama, and Camilla Harris because they're no different. They have that same spirit. Now you think about it. It's almost absurd. Can't answer questions, he gets a word salad. But then it got worse. When Israel went into Rafa and got Sinwar, Sinwar was to Israel what Bin Laden was to the United States. Her boss, Joe Biden, as vice president under Obama, was against killing Bin Laden. Joe Biden opposed the commando raid into Pakistan to kill bin Laden. Obama did it anyway under certain pressures. But Joe Biden opposed it. Camilla Harris, in league with Blinken, of course Biden, Jake Sullivan, the so-called National Security Advisor, and co, but led by Harris, opposed the Israelis going into Rafa. Sinwar said what we did on October 7th last year, we're going to do again. And Harris wanted to make sure he would survive to do it. She objected to Israel going in to Rafa. But they went in anyway. And got him. Mr. Netanyahu knew it was an election year. They were beginning to hemorrhage Jewish votes and financial support. And because it was an election coming, she couldn't stop him completely. So they got their Bin Laden, they got their Yaye Sinwa and others. No thanks to her, Sinwa would be alive, planning the next October 7th, had she gotten her way. Weak men? You will not find a weaker man than her Vice Presidential Running Mate, Waltz. They stood by Islamo-fascist and pro-Islamo-fascist 
neo-Hitler youth blocking Jewish students from going to their classes on major universities. She's an enemy of Israel. She only plays the game because it's an election. There's a Jewish vote and Jewish money in certain states. That's why she chose Waltz instead of Shapiro. Had she chosen the governor of Pennsylvania, Shapiro, she would have a stronger ticket to run against Donald Trump, but Shapiro was a Jew. You don't want to offend the squad. Olmert, who's said to have married her brother, the Muslim from the Horn of Africa, or Tlieb, the congresswoman from Hamas, dances with a Palestinian flag, not an American one. Or their supporters. This is where Harris is, an enemy of Israel. Now remember, we don't say you have to endorse everything the Israeli government does. But we're told in Zechariah 12, Satan wants to destroy Israel and get the Jews out of that land and especially out of Jerusalem to prevent the return of Christ. She's an agent of Satan. But then something else happened. This past week, someone stood up at one of her rallies after she visited a church and said, Jesus is Lord. Upon hearing that, she was scornful and mocking. She literally mocked and said, you're at the wrong rally. Jesus is Lord. You're at the wrong rally. Get out of here. Yet despite this, there's even some people professing to be saved Christians who would vote for that woman. Not many, but some. Go ahead and kill the babies. We'll vote for you because you're black. Because you're a woman. Because we don't like Donald Trump. Oh, boy. Jesus is Lord, not here. You're at the wrong place if you say Jesus is Lord. Go to the other rally. That's what she said. Well, Jesus is Lord. And I want a president, a leader of the free world, who at least acknowledges that Jesus is Lord. God will bless those who bless Israel and curse those who curse Israel. Not to sanction everything the Israeli government does, but their right to exist. From the river to the sea, Israel will always be, saith the Lord. I want God to bless America. His judgment would have come on America a long time ago had America not blessed Israel and sent missionaries to so many countries teaching that Jesus is Lord. For those two reasons, the wrath of God has not yet fallen on America. But if you get a Queen Athlea in the White House, Judgment will be inevitable. I'm not endorsing any political candidate. I'm just beseeching people to pray that that paid whore, that disgusting hypocrite, that liar, that unprincipled woman, that baby killer, that racist, 
will not be elected. That the judgment of God will at least tarry. And perhaps that the blessing of God may come while there's still time. This is my prayer. I am praying and asking all of our listeners and viewers to pray that that wicked, wicked woman does not win. Like Queen Athlea, she supports the killing of babies. Like Queen Athlea, she will do anything, no matter how unprincipled, to secure power. But it's not her. It's not even the political bosses and corporate and banking interests who will control her. It is the demonic powers that will and are controlling her. What do I say? Please pray she does not win. Jesus is Lord.